Hello everyone and welcome to another ZBrush tutorial. Real quick, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave a comment down below to help my channel out. If you're having difficulty learning how to sculpt faces and the anatomy underneath, I've been making more Skillshare classes lately and right now I just finished another course called ZBrush How to Sculpt Faces on Skillshare. If you use the link in the description down below, you can get a month of Skillshare absolutely free and you can watch all of my content on there. You can cancel anytime, it's totally risk-free. If you've never sculpted eyes before, it's really helpful to understand the basic anatomy of the skull. If you haven't already checked out my video on basic skull anatomy, I'll leave a card at the top and you can check out that video. That'll just go over the basics of the human skull and the major bones and wall of the parts underneath that you need to be able to sculpt faces. One really important thing to recognize before you start sculpting your eyes, at a three quarter angle like this, you can see the face has this sort of boomerang shape here that comes from the cheek in toward the eye and then up and out toward this high corner of the brow bone. So before I even put any eyeballs in there, I wanna create the shape for the eyelids, which is why I have my reference image here on the side, and we'll talk about that as we go. So first I'm gonna take Damien Standard, carve a line in like this that's at an upward angle because the inner corner of the eye is a little lower than the outer corner of the eye. And then I'm just going to, at an upward angle, trace the shape of that upper lid by holding Alt with my Damien Standard brush and just making a nice, ridge that sticks out and forward like that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the lower lid, but I'm gonna look down at my model so that I can make it wrap around and forward because I wanna make sure that this shape is wrapping around the eyeball because the ligaments that hold your eye in place on both sides are just pushed back along the sides of the eyeball and then the eyelid stretches and wraps around the front. So you wanna make sure that there's more of a roundness to this and you can really accentuate that by grabbing your move brush, grabbing the inner corner of the eye looking down at an angle like this and pushing that inner corner in and pushing the outer corner back as well so that the eyes are really pulling back on both corners. Once you have this shape, you can just kind of smooth it down a little bit, maybe go over it one more time with your Damien Standard, hold Alt and just trace along the edge and make sure that it's sticking out and wrapping around. And now that I'm to this point, I wanna hold Control and I wanna go over to my brush over here and select my Mask Lasso tool. So with the mask lasso, I'm just gonna mask off the bottom eyelid and then use my move brush to kind of move around this top eyelid and get it into this shape that I see here. Something I wanted to talk about here and why I have this reference image up is there's a bunch of different parts that all connect together to make this eye sort of what it is. So if we look here, we have the tear duct and that shape is sort of this little triangle in the corner of the eye and that fleshy lump that kind of holds the eye in place. And then you have the upper lid that comes up to a high point here travels down and wraps around the eye on the outer corner. And then the shape of the lower eyelid starts here at that tear duct, comes up to this high point here again, travels down and over and wraps around that eye. And the upper lid folds over the top of the bottom lid. So while I have this masked off, I'm just gonna use my move brush to try and create that shape of the top lid. Just moving it around like this, making sure that it comes up to one high point here and then travels down and over to the outer corner of the eye over here. Then I'll hold control, tap outside my mesh to flip my mask, and I'll just do the same thing for my bottom lid. So I'll look at it from an angle here, make sure that it's actually gonna be wrapping around the shape of that eyeball. So now for this inner corner, I wanna raise this part up a little bit. Make sure that you create a little bit of space in here for that tear duct. And like you can see here, this shape comes over and wraps around. It creates this sort of like hook shape that wraps and creates that tear duct in the middle. So I wanna make sure that I get that shape in there from the top lid attaching to the bottom lid like that. I'm noticing here that my inner corner is a little bit higher than the, the outer corner of my eye. So I'm gonna grab my move brush, grab the inner corner and just bring it down and grab the outer corner and bring it up a little bit, kind of smooth it out and make sure that it's looking okay. All right, so that's looking okay. So now I have this little hole here when I've got both eyelids kind of shaped a little bit the way that I want them. Next, we have to append in an eyeball. So I'm gonna go over to Subtool Go down to append and I'm going to choose sphere 3D. And if I hold alt and tap on the sphere, I can just scale it down and move it up and then snap to my, my side view by holding shift and move the eyeball into the socket and just sort of scale it down. So when I'm placing this eyeball in the eye socket like this, I want to make sure that it's not too big. I don't want it to be, you know, sticking out way too far. And generally the eyes are about one eye distance apart from one another. So with my sphere in place for my eyeball like this, what I want to do next is go up to Z plugin, go to Subtool master, select mirror, X axis and hit okay. 
and it's going to mirror it perfectly to the other side. So now if I press X on my keyboard, it turns on symmetry and I can press W and move both eyes freely like that and place them about one eye distance apart from one another. Now if I hold shift, snap over to my side view, press W and push these back into the face, they sit relatively okay. It looks like they're a little bit wide on the face, so I could kind of bend my rules a little bit for the placement and the distance between them if I want to move them a little closer together. You just kind of have to use your judgment because all faces are different. Now that I'm to this point, I want to really start accentuating those eyelids and trying to get that shape to look more believable. So you're going to have this inner corner of the eye here, and you're going to maybe have to move in this inner corner closer to the nasal bridge right here. And then this outer corner of the eye is going to have to really wrap back and create this cone shape for how you see the eye from the side like this. In CG and 3D, a lot of artists talk about how they try to make their eyelids a little bit thicker. And that's because it makes it easier for it to catch the light and stand out a little bit better and just look more believable. So when you're working in 3D, you might wanna make your eyelids a little bit thicker than they are in real life. Next, I'm just taking my H polish brush and smoothing down the inside cavity in here and making sure that it's nice and flat for the inside part of both eyelids. And then taking my move brush and really looking at this shape here and trying to really copy what I see here for the shape of that lower lid and upper lid and how they connect together to create that tear duct. When you're looking at an eye from the side like this, the upper lid sticks out and forward just a little bit more than the lower lid. So I'm going to take my move brush. First, I'll mask off my upper lid here and then I'll grab my move brush and just push this lower lid in a tiny, tiny bit. Hold control, tap out here to flip my mask and just move this upper lid out and forward just a tiny bit more. So now this, if I draw a straight line down from here, this is out in front of the lower lid like it should be. Next, we have to think about the brow and how it connects and how it sort of folds over the top of your eye like this. So the eyelid you can see here in the reference image is really small and it tucks underneath the brow bone. So if you even feel on your own face, you can feel where the bone is and where the eyelid actually sort of tucks underneath and back up behind your eyeball like that. So we're gonna take the Damien standard brush and just try to trace this same shape and that's gonna represent where the brow begins and where the eyelid is tucked underneath. The eyelid just kind of comes out and down and stretches out to the side of the eye like this. Now I'm gonna start tracing just a little bit of that shape of the lower lid from the outside. I don't wanna trace the same shape the way I did with the top lid. The tissue kind of comes down and over and it's very soft, a very gradual transition, but there's just a few lines that really make everything stand out. And if you start here at the corner of the eye, the inner corner, and trace down and over like this with your Damien standard and then smooth it down, that's gonna create this little pocket where the bone is underneath. And so you can carve in from the outer corner like this and smooth it out. And then from the inner corner, carve down and out. Let's move that out. And you can even from this outer corner, carve down and over like this to really accentuate that cheekbone, the widest part of the face like that, to really create that, that eye socket shape. Next, I'm gonna really try to make this brow bone stand out the way that it should. So try to look at a reference image from a three quarter angle to see that shape and how it kind of comes around like this and follows the shape of that tear duct a little bit and smooth it down so that it's not so hard. And then this inner corner of the eye, I can grab my clay buildup brush, go in, hold alt, and just kind of carve in a little bit of space so that there's this shape of the inner uh, socket and just sort of follow that shape down, hold alt and carve in like this. And now we're already starting to see where the cheeks come up and connect with the nose. And there's a couple of shapes to really keep an eye out for. One is this nasolabial fold that comes down from the center of the nose bridge and wraps down and around the mouth like this, and how the fat pads of the face also kind of travel over across the cheeks and around this way. So there's, these shapes are gonna help outline the shapes around your eyes, and then the brow bone and how it connects comes around, up, over, and it's a little bit thicker on this corner, on the outer corner of the eye, a little more pronounced on that outer corner like that. So if you're having trouble getting this upper and lower lid to kind of fit the shape that you want, um, you can also just go into solo mode and mask off the upper lid and lower lid and just keep using your move brush 
and make sure that you're looking down on top of the lower lid and pulling it forward or pushing it in however it needs to be to wrap around that eyeball. And then hold control and tap outside to flip your mask and look at your upper lid and make sure that it's wrapping around the eyeball as well and that you get the shape of that inner corner of the eye that there's space in here and the outer corner as well that it's not too far back because you don't want the outer corner of the eye to come all the way back to here. It's not a huge amount showing. If you look at a reference image from a face from the side, it's just a little bit of the eye showing like this. And the upper lid, depending on the expression and how the person looks, the upper lid can kind of droop down a little more on this side of the eyelid so that it's hanging forward a little more like this. Now I'm just gonna smooth out all my shapes here and try to really accentuate the upper lid. I'm gonna take the Damien standard brush, hold alt, carve along this outer edge to make it really nice sharp edge there. And same thing with the lower lid. I kind of messed up that corner there. I'll just trace that shape from the outer corner going over to that high point where the tear duct starts and then coming down into that inner corner of the eye. So just trying to really accentuate those shapes and then carving in and really trying to get that eyelid to look like it's tucking up and back behind the eye like this. So once you're to this point and you have your eyelids in kind of the right shape and they're wrapping around the eyes like this, make sure that you have your boomerang shape coming from the cheekbone in toward that outer corner of the eye up toward the brow bone. Now we can actually start painting the eyes. So I'm gonna hold alt tap on my eyes to select them and go into solo mode. Make sure that you have symmetry turned on and press control D on your keyboard a couple times to get some more geometry because it's gonna make your paint look a lot better. So my active number of points is around 260,000. Now I'll hold control, go over to my masking brush and select the mask perfect circle brush. And I'm just gonna zoom in on one of my eyes here, find the center, hold control, draw out a circle and then go out of solo mode to see if that looks like a good placement. And even if the placement isn't quite right, I can always rotate the eyes a little bit to fix that. This looks a little too big, so I'm gonna clear it and maybe do a little bit smaller. Something like that looks about right. So if I hold control and click outside of my object, it'll flip my mask. Now I wanna look at the colors that I have going on in this eye here. So this is like a teal, kind of greenish bluish color. So I'll grab that sort of color over here on my color picker. And I'm just gonna grab my paintbrush by going to B, P, and grabbing the paintbrush. And I'll just paint in that color right in the center like that. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna go into solo mode, hold control, make another mask that's gonna cover up that eye. Hold control, flip my mask and then find the center of my eye again and draw another circle because I'm gonna use the outer ring and fill it with black. So I'll grab my color picker here, choose black, grab my paintbrush and just paint in that surrounding color. And I like that to be a little bit sharper because it looks really nice and really makes the eyes stand out. So when you're hand painting eyes like this, you want to obviously paint the pupil right in the center here. And you have to pay attention to the highlights and where the lights and darks are for your colors. The top half of the eye is gonna be darker because it's covered by your brow and your upper eyelid, and the lower half is gonna be a little bit lighter. So hovering my keyboard over this dark color, I can press C to grab it, and then drag my color picker a little higher to get a lighter color, and then just kind of paint that light color in on the bottom half of my eye like this, and making sure not to get too close to my pupil because I don't want to mess it up, but we're just gonna paint in this lighter value on the bottom, and then I'm gonna grab my color picker and drag it just a little bit lower to create like a mid value sort of in between the two and just sort of blend upward into that darker color like this. And then I can just grab a lighter color and really, really paint the bottom to make it really light. If you're to this point with your eyes and they aren't looking like the circle is right in the middle, you can press W on your keyboard. Make sure that symmetry is turned on. Press this little go to unmasked mesh center button and your gizmo will snap to the center of your eyeball. Then you can just use these rings to rotate your eyes to make them a little closer or further apart. So once we get in the light on the bottom and the darker part on the top half, grab the darker green color by pressing C on my keyboard and then making it even darker and then just painting in some darker lines that go around in a circle sort of pattern that kind of blend together and then just grabbing the lighter color and sort of blending all of that together a little bit. Now on the very top, I'm gonna make that the darkest, so I'll press C to grab that again, make it even darker, and we'll paint in the darkest color on the top here because that's where the least amount of light is going to reach, so it's going to be much darker. Now if you have your eyes to this point and you wanna put in some highlights, like we have that reflection on the eyeball right here, you can just grab some white on your color picker over here and just draw in a circle of white here. 
And usually when there's a highlight on this part of the eye, there is generally another highlight over down near the corner on this side, or it's going to be reflecting a little bit like here and here. It all just depends on the placement of your light. The very last thing that you wanna do once you get your eyes all painted up like this is you wanna grab a black color, have your brush at a really low opacity or use pressure sensitivity like I'm using, and the shape of the eyelid goes over the eye and creates this little shadow on the upper part. So we're just gonna very lightly paint in a little bit of black and it's gonna create that eye shadow overhanging effect. So I just took a really light line of black and just painted it along where that upper eyelid goes and it creates that hand painted eye shadow kind of look. After you've got your character's eyes in place, just keep trying to refine the shapes. Make sure that the eyes look like they're the right distance apart from one another. Keep looking at reference photos. It's really important to always be using reference no matter what you're working on because your brain is going to trick you into thinking that you're doing a good job. But then later on, if you look at reference, you might realize there's a lot of things wrong with your sculpts that you weren't able to see while you were working on it. Well, that is all the time that I have for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you are having trouble sculpting faces, go and check out my Skillshare class. It goes over all of the basic proportions and the structure of the skull underneath and how to get started with learning how to sculpt faces and the placement of all of the anatomy and the fat pads in a really simple process. It's just 10 videos and it'll get you started for getting to a place where your faces are not going to look as chunky, or if you're having trouble understanding the structure, it'll really help you go over those things and kind of get you started. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, be sure to leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see whenever I come up with stuff. But until next time, thank you.